Hi everyone, and welcome back to Storytime with me, Sammy. Now, today's story is about a war in a forest between the flying creatures and the four-legged animals. Now, what causes this war, you may wonder? Well, there is a bird that is considered royalty in this forest called a willow warbler. And one day, a bear comes along. He demands to see the royal palace. And then when he sees it, he offends the chicks. The chicks refuse to eat until the bear apologizes, but the bear won't do so. And that causes all out war between the animals. This story is called The Willow Warbler and the Bear. Shall we begin? The Willow Warbler and the Bear, written by the Brothers Grimm, but edited by me, Sammy. Once in the summertime, the bear and the wolf were walking in the forest together. The bear heard a bird singing so beautifully that he said, Brother Wolf, what bird is it that sings so well? That is the king of the birds, said the wolf, before whom we must bow down, for he takes charge of all those who fly, and we do not want another war. This bird was the willow warbler. If that is the case, said the bear, I should very much like to see the royal palace. Come now, take me there. That is not done quite as easily as you seem to think, said the wolf. You must wait until the queen returns with to the palace with food for the young chicks. Soon afterwards, the queen arrived with some food in her beak, and the Lord King came too, and they began to feed their young ones. The bear would have liked to go at once, but the wolf held him back by the sleeve and said, No, you must wait until the king and queen have finished feeding their young ones, and once they have gone away again, we cannot attend the palace unless we are invited. If you truly wish to see it, we must wait until the royal chicks are left alone. So they made note of the hole where the nest lay and trotted away. The bear, however, could not rest until he had seen the royal palace and when a short time had passed, returned to it again. The king and queen had just flown out, so he peeped in and saw five or six young ones lying there. You call that a royal palace, cried the bear. This is a wretched palace. You are not king's children, you are dishonorable children. The young willow warblers heard that and they were frightfully angry and screamed. No, that we are not. Our parents are honest people. Bear, you will pay for that. How dare you dishonor the royal birds? The bear and wolf grew uneasy turned back and went home as quickly as they could. The young willow warblers, however, continued to cry and scream. When the king and queen once again brought food to the royal chicks, they declared, We will not so much as touch one fly's leg, no, not even if we were starving, until you have settled whether we are respectable children or not. The bear has been here and insulted us greatly. Then the old king said, be easy, they shall be punished. At once he flew with the queen to the bear's cave and called in, Old bear, how dare you insult my children? You shall suffer. We will punish you. This means war. Thus, war was announced to the bear and all the other four-footed animals were summoned to take part in it. Oxen, foxes, donkeys, cows, deer, and every other animal the earth contained, and the willow warbler summoned everything which flew in the air. Not only birds large and small, but also gnats, wasps, hornets, bees, and even the flies wanted to take part. When the time came for the war to begin, the willow warbler sent out spies to discover who the enemy's commander-in-chief was. The gnat, who was the smallest and most crafty, flew into the forest where the enemy was assembled and hid herself beneath the leaf of a tree where the secret signal was to be announced. There stood the bear and he called the fox before him and said, Fox, you are the most cunning of all the four-footed animals. You shall be general and leaders. Good, said the fox, but what shall be the signal we agree upon? No one knew what to suggest. 
So the fox thought on it and said, I have a long bushy tail, which looks almost like a plume of great feathers. When I lift my tail high up in the air, all is going well, and you should charge. But if I let it hang down, run away as fast as you can. When the gnat heard that, she flew away again and revealed everything she had heard down to the smallest detail to the willow warbler. When day broke and the battle was to begin, all the four-footed animals came running with such noise that the earth rumbled beneath their feet. And the willow warblers with their army came flying through the air with such a humming and buzzing and swarming that everyone was uneasy and afraid and both sides advanced against each other. But the willow warbler sent down the hornet with orders to settle beneath the fox's tail and sting him with all of his might. When the fox felt the first thing, he jumped in surprise. It hurt so much that he lifted a leg from the pain, but he bore it and kept his tail high in the air. At the second sting, he was forced to put his tail down for a moment, and at the third, he could hold out no longer. He screamed and put his tail between his legs. When the animals saw that, they thought that all was lost and they began to flee. Each ran home as fast as they could, and the birds had officially won the battle. Then the king and queen flew home to their children and cried, Children, rejoice! Eat and drink to your heart's content. We have won the battle! But the young chick said, We will not eat yet. The bear must come to the nest and beg for our pardon, and say we are honourable children before we will eat. Then the willow warbler flew to the bear's home and cried to him, Bear, you were defeated in battle. Now you are to come to the palace to my children and beg their pardon, or else you will be banished from our kingdom forever. So the bear followed to the royal palace, head hanging low, shaking in the greatest fear he had ever known. He begged for their pardon, and at last, the young chicks were satisfied. They sat and ate and drank and made merry quite late into the night, and they never had trouble from the four-legged creatures ever again. The end. Well, doesn't that just go to show why you should never ever bully someone just because they're smaller than you? Because all it took was one mean comment from the bear and it created all out war between the flying creatures and the four-legged creatures. Now I think I would have been terrified to see that. What about you? How would you react if you saw all the animals and all the flying creatures in the world going to war? Why don't you let me know in the comments below? And remember, I have a podcast available now. So if you want to listen to my stories as a series and not have it turn off like YouTube or Facebook would, click one of the links in the description below and it will take you to my podcast. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more story times with Sammy. Bye guys.